Welcome aboard Salish Air Nordhaven Model 46, hull number 50. Clarice and I have owned this boat since 2014, and it is equipped with both NIAD hydraulic stabilizers and paravanes. There have been a lot of questions on how difficult it is to launch paravanes, and the questions have gone into, um, oh my gosh, it must be difficult in heavy seas, and they sound really complicated, and setting up the lines are complicated. We have found none of these things to be true. Once we've gotten used to the paravanes, we've had really good um, times with them. We have used them in as much as 10, 12 foot seas with a four foot chop on top without the naiads at all, just to see how they work. They work great. We frequently use them now in combination with the naiads. It happened to be yesterday that we came in in a small craft conditions, small craft advisory conditions, and put them in the water. We haven't taken them out yet, so I thought this would be a good time to do the video. So with that, we will try to show you as well as we can how we rig and use our paravanes on Salish Air Nordhaven Model 46, hull number 50. Thank you. We'll try to start here. Um, I'm on the bow looking towards the back, and you can see the poles are extended with the paravanes currently in the water. While the conditions are light this morning, last night when we came into the anchorage, we were in small craft warning conditions and going around a point, uh, point conception in California that's known for its kind of sloppy conditions. With the uh, confused seas coming off the stern, we made the decision that the paravanes would help us smooth out the, the ride and make it much more comfortable for the humans. Of note is that we put the poles down when we leave the dock, whenever we're going to be offshore. The advantage to this is that the poles are like a tightrope walker um, and tend to smooth the roll of the boat quite a bit uh, without costing anything as far as speed or fuel. So you'll see a lot of us, and you'll see all the commercial fishing boats do it, run with poles down even though we don't have the fish in the water and that's pretty common. Questions as to how the different cranes are rigged. Um, when we bought Salish Air, it was originally rigged so that one of the two winches went to the top of the mast and was used to lift the boom. In that position setup, you don't have the ability to use one of the cranes for each side of the paravanes. We decided that instead of doing it that way, we would go ahead and use a halyard as our boom lift. Uh, currently it is set up with a 3 to 1 pulley system, which goes clear up to the top. And then that halyard comes down to a two-speed winch. With that, we are able to lift the dinghy, which is the heaviest thing we lift on this routinely. And it's not real easy, but it works okay for us. Uh, we've been experimenting with other ways, but in the meantime, that's what we've been using for the last year or so, and that has worked well. When we are setting up for paravanes, we lower the boom to almost parallel with the deck, and then tie it so it's pretty much centered. Before we leave the dock, we go ahead and hook a line to each paravane chain from the winch. That means that the poles are out before we leave smooth water, the paravanes are connected, and the chains are connected, can be lifted from down below, and there's no reason, once we're underway, that we need to come up here on a pitching upper deck in order to do any lowering. In case you're wondering about the controls for the cranes, this is where the upper deck control plugs in when we're operating the crane from up here, but we'll show you in a minute that in fact the cranes were set up originally so that they could be operated from down below as well. If you don't have that option and you're going to use paravanes, I highly recommend that you look into wiring those lower switches in as they make all the difference. There's no reason to come to this upper deck during heavy sea conditions. So now we're down in the cockpit and we're going to try to show a retrieval of a paravane while we're at anchor. 
this is really nice when you get to do this, but most times you're underway. We'll also try to show the other paravane being retrieved while we're underway, but we'll have lots of engine noise and wind noise and such, so it'll be hard to talk over that. Basically the same procedure. The other thing that's important to know is that launching the paravanes is exactly the same as retrieving them, just opposite. The most important thing is, if you have a paravane equipped boat and you don't have the switches in the cockpit like this, have somebody wire them in for you or do it yourself. Uh, they wire into the main relay box which is upstairs much closer to where the winch motors are. So with that, the paravanes again were put in the water yesterday when we were in small craft conditions. This morning we woke up and the winds have settled down. We aren't going to need them today. So we'll put them back into the ready condition. This is the condition that they are in when we leave the dock and anytime we're going to see where we're expecting rough conditions. Again, we don't ever want to go up on a pitching upper boat deck when things get rough. We can come back here. We try to launch them before the weather gets bad and um, that way one or two people can launch them. If we have two people, then one of them is just simply operating the crane buttons. As you can see here, one person can do both, but it's a little difficult. This is the slowest part to the whole operation, is waiting for the crane to pull the paravanes in. If we were doing this underway, I wouldn't have to push the crane line out away from our canvas because the water would naturally pull the paravanes away from the boat. So I'll stop at this position and you can see when I talk about that the cranes are connected to the paravane chains whenever we're in ready position, meaning that we're ready to go, they can be launched. This was hooked up like this before we left the dock and it will stay this way until we return to the dock and we're ready to take the dinghy down or whatever and use the crane for its many other purposes. Here is what I consider the hardest part of retrieval and launching is holding the paravane away from the transom. It, as it gets closer to the surface, it gets squirrely. And you'll see that when we do the underway video. A pair of gloves is not a bad idea at this point, and I always seem to forget them. I want to use the crane as much as I can for the lifting. The fish on ours are really pretty heavy. The fish come out of the water or go in the wrong position. They come out backwards. So they have to be rotated. This is again a um, difficult part. I haven't figured out a better way to do it. I keep dreaming I'm going to come up with something. I just then lower it. That's it. It's now in the rest position. If I were to launch, I would do exactly the opposite. I would lift it a little tiny bit with the crane, drop it, hold it out, let it go down into the water. As soon as it gets into the water, if we're underway, it pulls away from the boat and goes into its normal trim. And then I just lower the line until I see that the chains are straight off the poles. And that's it for this section. This is what the paravane looks like when it's underwater. Notice that we're clear at the stern on the boat and the paravane is really off the stern. They come back at quite an angle when they're deployed and the boat is moving. This is why you get a lot of um, fore-aft protection from them in addition to the side-to-side. -side. So Clarice is going to pull the paravane while we're underway and right now she's just pulling it in with uh, the uh, crane. Don't know if the video is good enough, but uh, you can just start to see the paravane underwater. Water here is fairly clear. And notice how the paravane, when it's in the water moving, 
maintains its trim and pulls itself away from the boat. Now if I can get Clarice to hold on, I'm going to back up. Okay Clarice, go ahead. She's pushing the crane button with her right hand. You can also push it with your knee, although it's a little high for the two of us. She's now got the paravane chain controlled and is controlling the fish so it doesn't hit the boat. Again, the hard part is turning the darn thing around and getting it started into its cradle. We had said that we were only going to show a retrieval of the paravane, but darn it, we're having so much fun that we decided to go for it. And besides that, what good teaching video would not have a review section at the end? So we're going to do a uh, partial deployment and retrieval. We aren't going to let it clear out because that's what takes the longest is letting the crane down. So Clarice is ready. The boat has been slowed down to about a thousand RPM, so we're going along about four knots. Uh, the autopilot is working fine. We've checked that we have no vessels in front of us, and we're ready to go here. Clarice is trying to use the knee technique this time to get the uh, paravane loose from its cradle. You have to jiggle it up a little bit and then lift it. Again, if you have two people, that's where it gets nice, is to have the second one. And again, I think this is the hardest part to the whole deployment, is turning it around. I'm trying to look over Clarice's shoulder to show you how it looks when it hits the water. Very quickly, gets to its trim position and at this point you would release the line and take it away from the boat. Now we're just going to do the opposite and we're going to pull it right back in. As soon as it breaks the water, then it becomes squirrely. That's when you have to worry about it hitting the boat. Spinning it around so it's pointed the other way so it'll fit in its cradle. She's going to do the full lift and drop it in the cradle. Release the line a little bit so it's there. And that's how it is. And there you've got it, folks. Ta da! Full, full scale launching and retrieving of paravanes. Thank you.